Well, hello everyone and welcome to the April 26th uh, Carvel community meeting. Uh, we'll start with any, we'll start with the announcements here up at the top. Uh, who wants to take this one? I can take it. So um, during the upcoming KubeCon, um, Cloud Native Con Europe, uh, Carvel will be there. So we have um, three exciting things going on. One is a recorded talk by Drow and myself regarding Kubernetes package management using Unix philosophy with Carvel. So it'll be a great way for y'all to come check out how um, you could leverage Carvel to do package management and what kind of benefits you could reap. So for those who are in the America time zones, it's, it's early in the morning, but for those in European time zones, it would be perfect for y'all to come join. So um, there's gonna be a short Q&A as well. So um, looking forward to meet you there. And we also have live office hours. So two of our maintainers will be there for about 30 minutes to answer any of your questions and um, discuss any topics that you would like to uh, talk through. And there is a company virtual booth where you can check out the demo. We have the link here, so you can also take a look ahead of time um, for our main uh, for our community members. So yeah, check those out, and we'll see you at KubeCon. That sounds great. Uh, thank you, Helen. So with that, um, we can start getting into our status updates. So we've got a lot here for YTT. Yeah, um, Garrett, did you want to talk about the new release? Um, yeah, so we made a release of version 32 on, I believe it was Wednesday of last week. And that was the first release in a couple months for YTT. So it included a bunch of things. And um, if you click on those release notes, we can see some of the highlights um, on that release. Yeah, so during our process of schemas, we've identified some areas and overlays that need to be adjusted for YTT. And some of those things are array items are now being appended by default during an overlay. And you can now overlay over null values as well. Um, we've included some support under the experimental schema flag. So there's more features if you wanna kick the tires there. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more, all the links to the issues that were addressed in this uh, release are linked here. And I think there's also some support for the ARM64 binaries as well now. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, which brings us down, or uh, do we want to talk about our schemas? Yeah, yeah, the uh, the schema track continues to progress. Um, we're we're continuing to make progress there. Garrett was talking about some of the stuff that you can actually see under the experimental flag, um, and there's active work right now going on in terms of being able to provide the same level of support for uh, contributing your own schema if you inherit someone else's library, adding your own, working on that kind of thing right now. Uh, there's a few items left, and we'll get to the point where we've reached kind of a base, um, like minimum viable functionality. We're calling that V1. Uh, we've already started looking at V2. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit, but just being able to support uh, exporting YTT schema in open API schema format. So you can use all the tooling that you're used to for that um, uh, and support for that. So there's couple of parts to that piece, being able to export the schema. And then we're also looking into ways in which uh, GUIs that generate a uh, nice experience for end users who are entering in configuration values, like being able to give hints to those GUI generators. Uh, so we're digging into that kind of stuff there. That's what the V2 stuff is about. So that's the update. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Garrett. Thank you, John, for the updates on YTT and on the schemas. Um, so the next thing we have here is that there was a new alpha release of cap controller. Uh, who wanted to take this one? 
I can take it. Um, so yeah, there uh, was this morning just a, a new alpha release put out of CAP controller that um, has basically the three main features. Um, two of them are really related to this idea of improving the debuggability of CAP controller um, as far as how people interact with installed packages and package repositories. What ends up happening is that both these resources actually create this underlying app CR um, when they are created. And folks were finding it very difficult to find errors associated with those app CRs when they would occur. So one of the things that we did was just um, elevate that error message up to the installed package and package, repos uh, package repository statuses to help people find error messages a bit quicker. Uh, the other work that was added in here was support for Helm v3 templating. Um, and then there, there will, as part of this, uh, eventually be the removal of Helm v2 templating. But uh, for this time, both versions are still supported. Um, as far as, um, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> as far as um, the installation docs, they can be found at the link there. Um, but yeah, this should be available for anyone to get started with. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and it looks like there's a list being compiled of guides and examples for YTT. Did anyone want to talk a little bit about this? Sure. Um, so we have a amount of work coming up for making guides of real life examples that showcase best, best practices of using YTT. And we've come up with a first pass list of guides that we want to create. This, this is going to be prioritized for some time in the future. So there is time to get your feedback in if there are any guides that you want to see, or if there's any specifics around these five guides listed in this issue that you want to share like specifics on. Um, so yeah, we're really interested in hearing feedback on this. Um, feel free to share what kind of guides that you want to see in this issue or on Slack, because um, we'd love to hash out some of those use cases. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be a really useful thing for the project. OK, so that wraps up what we have listed for the status updates. Was there anything else that anyone wanted to cover before we move on? See a lot of no head shakes. All right, so we'll press on then. Uh, what have we got coming up this week? Oh, I cannot see that. <laughs> um, I could quickly share my screen if that would be faster. Let's yeah. see. Share my screen. Google Chrome. So I'm clicking on that. Yes. Make the screen wider. So this week we have, um, so again, our priorities are working through YTT schema work, um, the both type checking part. And so we're working, focusing on a lot of our efforts there. Another track that we're working on is also this issue around performance for uh, image package copying. So we've noticed that uh, we've heard from some users that um, the, the actual copying takes a while or, and it doesn't give you any uh, input information, feedback in terms of like what's going on behind the scenes. So um, one of our maintainers draw here is working through that. So um, kind of Im improving the user experience of image package. That's another focus area that we have this week. And um, we don't, we normally go through like different issues to talk through what's coming up and we um, throw estimates on them, but I believe we have a lot of um, you know, estimated work already in our pipeline. So a lot of the issues that you see here under the prioritized backlog, we've already reviewed them in our previous community meetings. So I won't bore you to review them again, but um, just, um, just so you know, these are the things that we have prioritized in the backlog and we'll be working through them. So that's what we have planned for the maintainers, but um, for the community members out there, uh, please feel free to, you know, chime in in any of these prioritized backlogs or we have um, issues that we have marked as good first issue. So 
we'll love to see more engagement from the community. So, um, and if there is any particular issue that is either not prioritized or um, it's just like um, triaged, we do have this thing called feature voting. And I think we've mentioned it in the past as well. So if there's an issue that you're interested that you want to indicate that um, either you want to work on it or you want others to work on it with you um, or maintainers to take a look at it more, uh, please vote on this particular issue. The way you can do it is, let's see, how do I do it on ZenHub? If you go to that specific GitHub issue, there's a smiley face um, on the right top corner. You'll see it, then you can press like upvote on that. So I'll have to look into how to integrate that in Zen Hub. I just noticed it, but you can do it on GitHub for sure. So uh, let us know which issue that you would like us to work on. So that's the plan for this week. That sounds great. Um, so what we have up next are triage help, and it doesn't look like anyone put anything in there, but in case there's someone that does want to add something, uh, feel free to speak up now. Oops. Okay. Seeing what looks like all hearts clear, let's go on to uh, the discussion topic. So, uh, any final feedback proposal for Carvel documentation? Yep, I added that one. Uh, so we've had a chance to go through a couple of rounds of, um, of looking through this scheme about how do we maintain our documentation across the Carvel suite? Do today we have a scheme where we're maintaining exactly one version, which is the latest. And this proposal suggests that we um actually maintain one live version which would which would be the latest version and uh but but keep copies of previous versions but they're completely frozen they wouldn't be updated once we released new versions um so we've gone through a number of round uh rounds of, of feedback feels like we've gotten to a point where there hasn't been much new feedback here but if there's anything that's been outstanding for you that uh, you meant to, to comment on it, you meant to make a suggestion here, or uh, you don't feel like the changes have adequately addressed your concern. Um, I really appreciate if, uh, if folks would uh, go ahead and jump in and do that. <clears throat> Best way is to like uh, make a review here and that'll sort of restart our clock in terms of waiting for things to settle out. But otherwise, you can see I've asked uh, the folks who are meant to be approvers for this proposal if they could go into GitHub and go ahead and indicate for themselves that they're um, that they're happy with the with the way this looks. When we pull the the trigger on that, then that can result in a set of stories for us, some chore work for us to kind of get our pipeline set up so that we can uh, follow uh, this approach. Is there anything that was outstanding for anyone with respect to the docs proposal? Cool. All right. Okay. Well, awesome. sounds like we're good and folks know where to go if they have any updates that they want to put into that particular issue. Exactly. So we've reached the end of our schedule. Um, I'd like to open up the floor if, if anyone has anything they'd like to bring up, talk about. No? Okay. Well, we can give you the time back if, if, if everyone's all good. Well, thank you all so much for being here, joining us for this community meeting, and we'll see you next time. Take care, y'all. Bye.